Welcome back to Is It Still Good, the channel where we watch older films and let you know if they still hold up. This week, we're going to watch a movie I actually like, and it's no secret I like this film, The Silence of the Lambs. But first, let's try to sell you guys some of my books. Okay, hopefully you guys bought some of my books, and we're going to talk about a movie I do like. So, spoiler on that. However, how much do I like it? We're going to get into that and why. Silence of the Lambs, 1991, rated R. Runs 1 hour, 58 minutes. Directed by Jonathan Demme, and written by Thomas Harris and Ted Talley. This one stars Jodie Foster, very famously Anthony Hopkins, and Lawrence A. Bonney. Okay? Just a very, very crazy, crazy film, and... This one's been referenced in everything. It's just iconic. Everybody knows Silence of the Lambs. Hello, Clarice is everywhere. Ted Levine is Buffalo Bill. Just his lines in the movie are so unsettling. Uh, the little penis tuck dance he did is very famous. It's just the whole nine. Every time I hear that song, you know, it's kind of ruined by this film. I don't know. It's a crazy, crazy movie. FBI trainee Clary Starling, played by Jodie Foster, works hard to advance her career while trying to hide or put behind her West Virginia roots, which if some knew, would automatically classify her as being a backward or white trash. This is a strange synopsis on IMDb. After graduation, she aspires to work in the agency's behavioral science unit under the leadership of Jack Crawford, played by Scott Glenn. While she's still a trainee, Crawford asks her to question Dr. Hannibal Lecter, played by Sir Anthony Hopkins a psychiatrist in prison thus so far for eight years in maximum security isolation for being a serial killer who cannibalized his victims. That's all you really need to know. Uh, she's questioning Hannibal Lecter to gain insight about a current operating serial killer known as Buffalo Bill, right? So that's it. It's a crime drama thriller. And it's really, really good. I mean, it's excellent. I, I would have given this high nines, actually. But I watched it again, and there was a couple of things that stuck out to me. One, there's some bad acting in it. There's actually some really bad acting in it. I never noticed that before, in particular with the cops. Anytime cops are on screen, they're just terrible. Also, another douchebag actor who plays a douchebag, Anthony Heald. Yeah, Anthony Heald plays uh, Dr. Frederick Chilton. He's a shitty actor. So between, you know, Dr. Chilton and the shitty acting cops, there's actually some bad actors, which kind of surprised me. I didn't really expect that. I just figured it'd be all aces. It's not. Ted Levine is pretty good as Buffalo Bill. He's very disturbing. And Anthony Hopkins is phenomenal. He carries the whole film. Jodie Foster, very good as well. So the two main leads, Anthony Hopkins and Jodie Foster, really do carry the film. And it has gone on to, to be this legendary movie that, uh, you know, everybody references. It's super iconic. It's very tough to give this thing anything less than like at least an 8 out of 10, even if you didn't like it, right? Now for me, considering this, and there were some pacing issues I noticed upon a rewatch, Again, shocking to me. If you would have asked me what I give Silence of the Lambs before the rewatch, I would have said like a 9.3, a 9.2, somewhere in there, 9.2, right? After the rewatch, I find myself at an 8.7. That's the official score I'm going to give it is an 8.7. And you guys are going to freak out on me because I do believe I gave Red Dragon a higher score, which is like, ooh, but Red Dra Dragon is shot better. And Anthony Hopkins has settled into Hannibal's character a little bit more. He's um, very energetic and hyper in this. I kind of like him a little more subdued in his Hannibal, actually. I think Hannibal matured as a character, even though the movies might be hit or miss. Um, but this movie, Oscar for Best Picture in 1992, and it won it. It won Best Picture in 1992. Winner for Best Actor in a Leading Role, Anthony Hopkins. Winner for Best Actress in a Leading Role, Jodie Foster. Winner for Best Director, Jonathan Demme. Uh, winner, Best Writing, Screenplay. Nominated for Best Sound did not win. Nominated for Best Film Editing did not win. Now, look, at, in 1992, I believe all this. Like, I mean, won all these awards, amazing movie. Now, how did it age? And that's the point of the channel, right? Like, we love these movies. I mean, this is a phenomenal movie. It's one of my favorites of all time still. But you got to go back and you got to look at it again. And you got to ask yourself, is it still really good? If you show this to somebody who's never seen it before, are they going to be as blown away as we were in 1992 when it came out? And the answer is no. As a matter of fact, I did show this to somebody who's never seen it before on the rewatch, and she didn't really get that blown away by it. 
I believe she gave it a 7 out of 10 when I asked her, which I think is preposterous. It's definitely higher than that. But is it, you know, 9.2, 9.3 that I thought? Mm, I don't know. Notably, I remember this one shot where Jodie Foster's driving and the camera's from underneath this weird angle. It's very shaky and it just looked like a very lazy shot to me. I noticed a few things like that. So don't jump on me in the comments until you've gone back and rewatch it. I love this film. I will always lo love this film. It's rated like number 23 on IMDb, like top rated films. That's crazy. People love this movie. However, got to go back and rewatch it. Your opinion may change upon a rewatch. We've had all these years, you know, 20, 30 plus years to like, you know, marinate and, you know, the surprises aren't really surprising anymore. The twists aren't really very twisty. Like the chick I was watching this with guessed the twists at the end, which annoyed me because I remember in 92 when I saw it, I didn't guess anything. I thought it was amazing. I was shocked. So how does it play to modern audiences? That's the question. So for those of you who have not seen Silence of the Lambs, is this going to blow you away? Mm, maybe not. But is it a solid, well-made film with amazing acting, great writing, really good sound? And is it enjoyable, entertaining, unique, cool? Totally. My thing is, I think you just need to see it because it's part of the zeitgeist of pop culture. Like, it's weird if you don't know what we're talking about by now. That's all. There's just movies you need to see so you just understand where we've come from cinema-wise. You know, and this is certainly one of the pivotal key moments, especially in crime, thriller, horror, like that kind of genre. Like this is right up there. It's the OG. It's considered like the godfather of serial killer films, you know? So I love it, but that's my score. That's a score I'm going to stay with. And I think it's a fair score. It's a very high one. It's just this film is not as perfect as I remembered. That's what I'm getting at. I remember this being like nearly a perfect film. Back to the Future was sort of that way. I kind of remember that as being a nearly perfect film and how much you want to bet. When I go back and rewatch that for the channel and do that review, I'm going to poke all sorts of holes in that too. So just an opinion and hey, you know, take it or leave it. You don't have to agree with me, but I just wasn't as blown away as I used to be. My date wasn't that enamored with it. And normally when a film's that great, you can show it to anybody and they'll have a similar reaction, at least in my experience. And this one... I don't know, just did not wow her, which was amazing to me. But I loved it. I had a great time with it. It's just not quite as perfect as I remember. Does that make sense? Am I allowed to say that on my own channel? I hope so. Either way, thank you guys for hanging out with me. Let me know in the comments. Now, before you beat me up too, maybe go back and rewatch it. Watch it tonight, then leave me a comment. What did you think after the rewatch? Was it as amazing as you remember? Are you as blown away knowing all the twists and so on? I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Anyway, thank you guys for hanging out with me and sticking with the channel. It's been a fun project so far. I don't plan on quitting anytime soon. So go ahead and subscribe and I will see you guys next time on Is It Still Good? Ha 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 ha!